Welcome to Study With The Best, the magazine show that's all about CUNY. I'm Tina Beth Pina. Today's show is all about CUNY people who are reaching out to the community around them and creating a better world. We'll introduce you to Lehman College students who spent some time building homes and schools in Honduras, a Queens College program with a robust ESL program, the CUNY Office of Veterans Affairs, and so much more. But first, a Queens College grad has been reaching out to a community of disabled children. While working in the mayor's office, Victor Calise has helped expand the sled hockey program in New York City. Kids shouldn't grow up feeling that they're different. Kids should grow up feeling that they're kids. You know, the good part is that we're able to catch them at a young age. We're able to show them that sport is available to them. We can show them that they can compete and they can play like they're able-bodied peers. They're called the Wheelchair Sports Federation and Sled Hockey Team. And they're kids with disabilities. My job happens to be the commissioner of the mayor's office for people with disabilities. I want to show these kids that they can, they can be the commissioner of the mayor's office for people with disabilities. It's really that simple. They can. I just want to let everybody know that I'm seeing a lot of good improvement on people skating. I see all the kids develop tremendously. If we look at the kids team that we started back last season, the kids were being pushed around. They couldn't even push the sled. Now they're pushing themselves. They're more involved. They're more involved with their friends. Build your self-confidence. It allows you to compete. It builds camaraderie. So it does so many different things. And overall, it just makes you feel good. No, I wasn't always in a wheelchair. Um, back in 1994, the year the Rangers won the Stanley Cup, I was uh, downhill mountain biking with my friends in uh, Forest Park. And uh, I flew over my handlebars into a tree, and I injured my spinal cord. Moved my fingers, and I went to move my toes, and I knew I was paralyzed right there. And, uh, when I first got hurt, I didn't particularly want to live. I didn't think wor life was worth living. And then as time goes on, and you start seeing that, and you realize that you can. It's like, wow, it's life. It's worth living. It's, it's everything. It's great. Paralympics are simply, and it's parallel, it's next to the Olympics. That's what the Paralympics mean. And it's for physically disabled athletes, and they compete and train in the same facilities as Olympic athletes do. Without my disability, I wouldn't have been able to travel the world the way I was. And it was all because of sport. People's perception, when they see people with disabilities, uh, you, know, you tell them, hey, you know, I competed in the Paralympic Games. They're like, oh, how nice. You know, how nice that is. And you know, they give you a pat on your back, and some people even pat you on your head. It's like, you have no idea what it's like. You have no idea what it's like to, to, to overcome something and be able to compete at a high level. The kids team that we put together, they don't have to worry about getting the pat on their back or the pat on their head. It's like, no, I'm here, I'm an athlete. This is who I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be this the rest of my life, and I'm gonna overcome anything that you put in my way. Now, again, good job. Now skate, Evan, skate. Evan, nice pass, really nice pass. Sled hockey was the thing that sort of immediately caught my son's attention. And we met Victor Khaleesi there, and he brought a sled for Sam the first day. And on that first day, Sam skated for two hours straight nonstop, and he couldn't stop talking about it. A lot of our players and kids don't have a lot of other opportunities to interact with other disabled kids. When you're disabled, you rely on other people to help you in lots of different things. And sort of like I said before, when he gets there on the ice and he's just skating by himself, he doesn't need my help, he doesn't need his mom's help, he's just skating. What I would like the kids to take away from their sled hockey team is that they're confident and they can do anything they want. And they can have careers and they can, they can excel in life. Let's go Rangers! Let's go Rangers! It, it has changed my son's life. It's changed, it's changed all these kids' lives. It's changed all their parents' lives. He's finally on a team like all his friends. It has made an unbelievable impact on his life. Move it, Michael, move it! Last night, when he was going to bed, he said, Mom, I finally got my first trophy. How great is that? Powerful stuff. Keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. All right. The Rangers sled hockey team has grown to 35 players and has played in other teams in New Jersey, Philadelphia, and even Minnesota. CUNY has partnered with Spoons Across America, a national program that promotes healthy eating in local communities. And one method they use is teaching kids all about honey. I think it's best to be healthy. I think it's important to eat healthy because, because, 
because so you can be strong enough because that helps me grow. It tastes better. We learn about honey. Schools Across America has been around since 2001, and we're a nonprofit. We teach children, teachers, and families, parents about the benefits of healthy eating and promote the idea of cooking together and sitting together around the family table. Who would like to see the honeycomb? Honey. I want you to use your nose and your eyes and see the different colors. Some are really light and some are really dark, okay? Our founder, Julia Jordan, is a professor at City Tech, CUNY. There's a Spoons Club at City Tech at CUNY. And we get so many different volunteers that come, and they work with the kids, they cook with the kids, they may read a story. Mmm, excellent. Fred watches his bees fly out into his backyard garden and the other gardens on the block. Too often we see that kids are grabbing something um, to eat very quickly or coming home and having fast food, um, which doesn't give them a lot of energy and an inability to learn. Um, we also find that kids are disconnected from their families often. Kids that sit down at the table with their families several times a week are less likely to have problems in school, so we think it's an important value. They're always very, very excited when we come to their school. They know that when Spoons comes, they're going to get to taste something good. They're going to get to learn something that they didn't know before. Um, the exciting thing about honey, many kids really have never really eaten honey, which is what we've been doing today. Um, but they also don't know that honey comes from their rooftops, right, in the city, that you don't have to um, go visit a farm that's outside of the city to have food that's from farm to table. All around is quiet Brooklyn City. Near the edge of the roof is another tiny city. It has three houses, each with two white stories and one red story. And inside, thousands of tiny rooms made of wax. Really the idea is, how do you eat a balanced meal? How do you understand what it took for your food to get from where it started to you. Now you may end up eating a tomato that's from California because you really like tomatoes, but you may not, you want to know how far that tomato traveled, how many gallons of gas needed to be used or how it affected the pollution. They also have the opportunity to um, meet a range of volunteers, all sorts of different people that can come into their lives and affect who they are, um, affect what they might want to be. We've had kids that say, oh, I want to be a chef after a chef visit in their classroom, or I want to be a farmer, or I want to go to the farmer's market with my parents. And so we try to model good behavior and model all the opportunities that they have, um, things to be and places to go. Honey, honey, woo! Tastes like berries. 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 Berries.
We lived and worked in Villa Soleada, a former shanty town. There, we worked with local families to help build a library, a school, and an orphanage. I feel happy to be out here and not be surrounded by um, traffic and having to worry about daily life. And I get to experience something that I wouldn't do if I was to just buy a plane ticket and go and visit a country. Lehman Life is a program where we take students from Lehman across the globe and across the U.S. to be able to partner with grassroots leaders and give back to a community based on what they need. So that can range from construction to working in elderly nursing homes to volunteering with homeless organizations or building schools in the slums of Kenya. But Amanda says charity begins at home. And in order to even qualify to do the program, they have to volunteer for 25 hours at home in the Bronx because we feel that you can't go and volunteer somewhere else if you have no idea what the needs are in your own community. My name is Juan Cruz, and I'm a graduate student here at Lehman College. In Honduras, I did the role of a reflector. Every day we had a debriefing where we shared our experiences and we had activities. Which was often an evening soccer match. And because Juan's major is middle and secondary education, Aside from being a reflector, I also tutored some of the local students there who were interested in learning English. It was with bilingual students, which is a demographic population that I wish to work with in New York. Students must pay their own way, airfare, travel insurance, everything. And they fundraise that money just to be able to go and do work and volunteer. It's, it's amazing. And a new fundraising idea, a global citizenship gala, a big bash at a fancy Bronx catering hall that attracted local dignitaries and business leaders. <laughs> we raised $17,000 in one night. My name is Cyril Njiken. I'm originally from Cameroon in Central Africa, and I'm a senior at Lehman College. I'm not your typical student. I'm 38, I'm married, and I have four boys. And Cyril shot the Honduras video you've been watching. I went to Honduras um, expecting to help the community, but I didn't expect that sight of seeing those children without parents. And that, that was an emotional scene for me because I knew that these children were orphans. Just thinking about it bring me tears to my eyes. The most memorable thing about Honduras was how familiar it was to me. It reminded me of my home country in Ghana, dealing with no water at times, no electricity, and just the camaraderie of the people of the village together. It just had the same feeling. The way they are and the way they're together, we don't have that. And that's something I'm learning. And that's something I'd love to bring back, you know, to my community, not just back to my house, but to the community where I live, like, that togetherness, you know. And, um, just that. Before they leave, they don't realize how much they have and how fortunate they are. And while they're there, you see that shift. I didn't come here for fun for vacation. I came here to be part of something bigger than myself. If you'd like to learn more about Lehman Life or to donate, visit us on the Lehman homepage and select Community Engagement. Hope to see you at our next fundraiser. And bring money. <laughs> Barry Mitchell, study with the best. One of the major obstacles that immigrants must overcome when they first arrive to the U.S. is the language barrier. A program at Queens College has been helping people read, write, and speak English since 1945. I felt like I needed to improve my English before I'm starting my college lessons. I was worried of how I could handle the situation in college, in school, my classes. I came to America um, in June this year, I came to America to improve my English to study in college next semester. The English Language Institute of Queens College is the oldest intensive English program in CUNY. We've grown to an average of about four to five hundred students a semester. 
the international students or the recent immigrants come to us and they've never been away from their families or they're landing in a new place. So in a way, our teachers are like their home away from home. Their classmates are their friends away from home. Most of our teachers have been with us for many, many years. The secret to our success, I believe, are the teachers. And if you don't have a plan, you need to get a plan because very soon when you're studying in the university, you're going to have so many classes and so many responsibilities. The motivation level of uh, ESL students is very high. Many uh, really want to learn, and it's, and it's a challenge to keep up with that, motiva their motivation level sometimes. I'm most proud when they're able to get into a college, whether it's in the CUNY system or farther afield, and succeed. It's the, the best compliment to have someone who can study at a foreign university in a foreign language. I think that's a huge accomplishment. A cup of wine with cheese oh, and I, the knife. We're talking about real issues, interject with humor, when the students can laugh, when the students can kind of lose themselves in speaking the language. And then often their fluency improves. The English Language Institute actually has two programs. The daytime program is a full-time intensive program and we also have a part-time evening program. I think the goals for the students at the day program, over 50% of them, their intention is to go on to a university. People are studying in the evening group part-time in order to improve their employability at work. Some of them want to learn English so that they can help their children with their homework, speak with their children's teachers. The one thing we face are students that are reticent, perhaps culturally taught, to listen more than participate. We have to get them to speak. I came to America three months ago for studying English and maybe some further subject. I'm very uh, interested in business, so I would get to know more about you know, uh, different market, how, how different people act and how different people think. I came here to study and improve my English and um, later on for internships. The classes here is uh, focus more on writing than I used to do in, back in Korea. One of the most rewarding parts of my job is seeing students grow, uh, seeing families reunited, and just knowing that this institute has been here for a long time servicing uh, the local population as well as the international population. The CUNY Office of Veterans Affairs is there to help vets successfully transition into student life and offer them other meaningful support. Lisa Biatha, the office director and a Gulf War veteran, explains. The role of my office is to make sure that, regardless, student veterans get the best service they need. Academic services, beyond academic services, transitional services career services, housing, child care. Our student veterans have a great opportunity because of the new task force recommendations. There is a published report called Soldiers to Scholars, and this report has over 38 recommendations that we can use. There are new spaces that have been designed at City College, John Jay, and I know the College of Staten Island has had new space designed and designated just for student veterans. We're trying to make sure that this happens university-wide, that there's a special designated space for veterans. We're also making sure that orientation takes place on each campus specific for veterans. Faculty members are being trained with cultural competency on how to interact with veteran students. It's easier for veterans to speak to other veterans, whether they're faculty or staff or veteran students, because you understand the lingo, you understand a lot of the transitional issues that may occur. The transition to student life can be challenging. Here's how four students have connected with the CUNY veterans community to make the transition easier. I am Mariette Catherine Kalinowski, and I am a second year MFA student here at Hunter. I wanted to be in the military since I was eight years old. I served in the United States Marine Corps from 2002 until 2010, and I did two tours in Iraq. In the military, you always have a buddy. 
when you're in combat, it's specifically to make sure that you're, you've got each other's backs. And by creating that same system on CUNY campuses, veterans help each other. I first came to CUNY in 2006 and I officially started classes in spring of 2007 after my first tour in Iraq. I knew there were other veterans, but I didn't know how to seek them out. I became involved with the Project for Returning Opportunities in Veterans Education. Every CUNY campus that PROVE is on um, has a student veteran space and advocates and coordinators who facilitate goodness. Veterans help each other and it's, uh, it's a recipe for success. My name is Adam Baumel. I'm studying political science. I am a sophomore. This is actually the end of my first semester at uh, John Jay College. I was never looking to join the military whatsoever, but I, I'm sort of like Marty McFly from Back to the Future where, you know, if someone were to try to say that you can't do something, I'm, I've always been that type of person to want to prove them wrong. I was in the U.S. Navy, I was stationed on the USS Nimitz, and I was in for a total of about four years. And I know people, you know, that aren't in the military think, you know, military life is so difficult, and it's not like it's not, but school life is in certain ways more stressful than military life. All the friends I know pretty much are all veterans at John Jay College. So I mean, it's, they've almost become like a second family to me, a huge second family. My name is uh, Lawrence Eubing. I go by Larry. I'm a student at John Jay. I'm uh, studying forensic psychology. I'm a veteran, Navy veteran, 27 years of service, retired in 2005. Because I served so long, I'm used to things being very structured and people doing what they're supposed to do when they're supposed to do it. And it was an adjustment for me to sort of go into a more of a free-flowing atmosphere. When I identify myself as a veteran, uh, most of the students seem interested. You know, like, where have you been? What have you done? You know, why did you join? Those types of things. And uh, it's a really, it's a great pleasure for me to interact with them. Our presence is good for the other students too, the civilian students. They get to learn that, you know, people who served in the military, especially the ones that served in combat, aren't monsters. They're just like they are. They just happen to have different experiences. My name is Monique Thomas. I'm originally from Queens. I am a student at BMCC majoring in healthcare information technology. I was in the U United States Navy for eight years straight out of high school. I got out in 1996 on an honorable discharge. Um, I was still under 30. I really didn't know the direction I wanted to go. So it was a lot of instability. There is a student veterans club at Burr Manhattan Community College. They meet every Wednesday at two o'clock. And in those meetings, you not only connect with fellow student vets, but you find out so much information that maybe you just didn't know during your transition meeting after you got out of the military. It's important to connect with other student veterans because where you are is where they've been. They could say, you know what, I know what you've been through, I've been there, done that. Here's a person that can help you get to where I am. I think CUNY is a great support system because when you lose a job or you, you just don't feel like you have a direction, CUNY provides that for you, that first step in that healing process and that direction for you. And I've, I've really been very pleased with the assistance that I've received at CUNY. It's been a big help. That's our show for this month. For more information on what you've just watched, log on to our website at cuny.tv or check out our Study with the Best Facebook page. Thanks for watching. See you next time.